Okay, I think uh, we we shall better start now. Uh, um, our friends, they may join us um, a couple of minutes later. Um, so, Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, this is Manoj Sakya. Uh, I'm the host today uh, in this SLS uh, uh, 16th episode. Um, we organize um, this event uh, very regularly, very often. And today we have um, we have Ed Shao, and uh, he's currently working in. Uh, computational intelligence lab, uh, if I'm not wrong, and uh, has recently um, published a paper related to the the, the particle physics particle uh, simulation, and he has uh, he has applied neural networks uh, for that simulation. And in today's talk, uh, we'll 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 try to understand uh, from his lecture that um, how neural networks actually is good for the the physics particle simulation as well so without any further delay uh, let me welcome Edi Shao um, and uh, uh, let me quickly uh, talk a little bit about house rules I mean housekeeping um, please do uh, mute your audio and video and after the uh, presentation if you have any queries you can directly ask uh, Idi Shao. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, Idi, hey, hey, are, are you ready? Yeah, yeah, sure. Now you can you can share your screen. I think you have that. Uh, okay, we. Uh, you can say. Can you share the screen? Uh, for now, no. Okay, let me quickly. Mm. Okay, Chirwe. Can you make him a co-host or something like that? Yeah, I'm at uh, ED as a co-host. Okay, it's all okay. okay. Right, yes, so please do share the screen. Okay, wait a... Uh, okay, can, can you see my screen now? Yes, uh, I can clearly see your screen. Okay, sorry, so I'll stop now. So hi everyone. Uh, today I'll introduce uh, particle-based simulation by neural network. So uh, first I'll talk about the background and uh, followed by uh, two recent papers. And uh, after that, I'll talk about uh, my uh, recent works about the physics simulation. So first is a background. <clears throat> so physics simulation is very useful in our life. So the most common applications are the filmmaking and game CG. For example, uh, through the particle effects, we can see the magic weapons in Doctor Strange. And by simulating the dynamics of fluid, we can generate a flood of water, such as the Tomb Raider. Yeah, so there are several kinds of representations for physics systems. Uh, two popular representations are particle-based systems and mesh-based systems. So the particle-based system is very flexible. Besides the fluid and rigid, uh, they can also represent smokes and, and many other things. So the mesh-based uh, systems are good at objects with continuous surfaces, such as clothes and the surface of water. They are, all, they are also very uh, easy to gener gener generate different, different type of object. So, so now, uh, since uh, in this talk, we mainly focus on the particle-based systems. So here I introduce some notions in this field. So for a particle-based system, uh, here are the particles. Uh, the data for particle-based simulations are the states of particles. For example, here, uh, P is the position and Q represent the velocity and A is the particles attribute, such as whether it's a rigid or fluid. So the goal is to predict future states of particles given current observations. 
So uh, recent particle-based simulators often view a system as a graph and adopt graph neural network as the basic uh, network structure. So in this attempt, uh, each particle is treated as a node in the graph. Uh, the, uh, the edge is represented by uh, two particles and, uh, and a predefined attribute so, uh, as shown here. And then we only link two particles. Uh, we only link two particles uh, with edges if the distance between them is less than R. So R here is uh, uh, hyperparameters. So as we can see on the right picture, uh, for particle VI here, uh, we draw a circle with radius R and the particles within this circle are regarded as the neighbors and uh, linked to uh, VI with, uh, with edges. So, and uh, we build this graph for each time step separately since uh, the neighbor will change at different time step. Uh, now I'll introduce uh, the first paper in 2019 and show some background of the work in this field. Uh, okay, so uh, the first one is DPI-NET. So DPI-NET extends interaction networks to its propagation network. Before that, I'll introduce the interaction network first. So this is a physical reasoning problem. For figure A here uh, is an overview about the process. The model takes object and relations as input and then reasons about their interactions. In this example, the effects here will slow down the ball, uh, uh, which will uh, approach in this, uh, the cubic here, and applies the effects and the physical dynamics to predict the new states. For figure B here, we can, uh, which can be generalized to more complex systems, the model takes as input a graph uh, that represents a system of a system of particles, uh, so here, O1, 2, 3 here, and the relations B1, B2, so which is a kind of connectivity is also. And B1, B2 is represented by the receiver, receiver here and sender and the relation attribute. Then it computes its, uh, their effects, uh, E1 and E2, uh, which is the uh, edge embeddings. The edge embeddings are then aggregated and uh, combined with the particle features and external effects to generate particle embeddings as is shown, as is shown here. So uh, X, X1, 2, 3 here uh, denotes the outer forces such as the uh, gravity. So finally, the, uh, the output model FO uh, predicts how the interactions and dynamics influence the object uh, and get the new states of the particles, such as the position. So we can summarize this process by two equations here. So first is to compute the effect of the interaction between two particles. And we have the edge embeddings EK here. Uh, then interaction network will aggregate information uh, from all edges and uh, to compute the new particle states, so which equals to the, this one is equals to the FO here. So this process is, uh, is more like to aggregate all the forces from neighbors and info, infer the particles uh, uh, new, new motions. Uh, oh, so now uh, let's talk about the DPI-NET. So DPI-NET extends the interaction network to uh, propagation networks. So as we can see here, the main difference is the use of uh, CK and uh, CR and CO. So uh, CR and CO are global features and they are encoded uh, from the initial particle states. Such techniques can introduce explicit information and, uh, into each block and can be better, uh, can better handle instantaneous propagation of forces. The, uh, the overview of DPI-NET is on the right, which show, uh, which show how the global vector work more clearly here. So here the encoded edge and uh, particle embeddings are directly fed into different blocks. Uh, so one thing is, uh, one thing to notice is that each blocks are share widths here. So which is similar to a recurrent, a recurrent model to some extent. So after that, we get the final representation of the particle features. And uh, so here is uh, the output and that, uh, so the position for the next uh, frame can be calculated by this function. 
So velocities time delta t and plus current positions. And finally, they apply the MSU loss on the velocities of each particles, and uh, which is shown here. So D here is the dimension of the output feature. Uh, another contribution of DPINet is a hierarchy structure. Since, since the network can only infer particle states from neighbors, and it's hard to capture long range dependencies. Uh, thus, the hierarchy structure is designed to solve this problem. Here, I won't go too far. And so please to refer uh, to the original paper for more details. Here are some results of the DPI net here. Uh, so during test, the model only has uh, the first frame as input and then call the model inter interactively to predict the future frames. So the MSE uh, is computed on the positions rather than the velocities here. So we can see that DPI net already did a good job in physics simulation. Here are the other ground truths and the predictions from the DPI net. So next, uh, just uh, let's talk about the GNS uh, uh, in 2020. So GNS is uh, short for the graph neural network based simulators. The main contribution is that they unify the particle based solutions by graph based framework. So the pipeline between GNS and uh, DeepNet are the same. They first use an encoder to build a graph according to the current particle states, then use uh, the graph neural networks to extract the particle features, and uh, finally use the decoder to predict the future states of the particles. So one of the main differences is the uh, graph block. So the basic block for GNS is the interaction network which is also mentioned by DPI-NET. As we can see here, uh, they use the particle pairs to, uh, to extract messages and store in the edge embeddings and then aggregate all the neighbor uh, edges according to the uh, neighborhood and infer the new particle states in the next time step. So here are some uh, examples from uh, GNS. So besides uh, the fluid, GNS also can simulate other complex materials, such as the sands and woods. And here are the rendered Im images are achieved by existing tools. So, uh, so far the, uh, the work only predict the dynamics of the particles and uh, the, render, the render task is uh, achieved by some existing tools such as uh, uh, Blender or something else. So uh, the main work is uh, the main work in physics uh, simula physics simulation uh, is to uh, given the three D coordinates and the states and predict the uh, future uh, dynamics in the uh, in the in the future time step. So now let's talk about uh, my recent uh, work on physics simulation here. So as discussed above, uh, modeling particle system as graph is very uh, useful. So previous methods uh, model interactions between each pair of particles as uh, graph edges. However, this will lead to huge computational overhead when the number of interaction increase. So on the other hand, uh, previous methods didn't fully explore the material specific semantics, so which controls different behaviors for different types of particles. Based on such observ observations, we try to use the attention map in transformer to simplify the representation of edges and combine the advantages of edges in GNN to extract more semantics. So we also ap apply the abstract particles to, dis to disentangle the material specific semantics from particle wise dynamics to better control different types of particles. And the metric here is the mean of the material-wise uh, MSC here. So, so here is uh, the, our framework. Uh, the main idea is to find uh, is to find the edges in GNN pass uh, in GNN. Uh, how the edges in GNN pass on the messages and try to represent them by transformer. So in this section, we omit the activation function and normalization. For simply uh, for simpli uh, simplification, here the GNN formulation uh, for updating the edges are commonly used in uh, previous uh, physics simulation uh, works. So as we can see in Figure A, 
the red box show how the edges are computed for each block in GNN. So we can decompose it as a summation of uh, several independent vectors, which lead to the figure B here. So in figure B, we separate the edges and denote them as a summation of two independent uh, tokens. So here like uh, receiver tokens and sender tokens. So in other words, uh, the value within the red box uh, are the same. So for example, the summation of the receiver and sender token here equals to the edge embeddings in figure A. So thus, we no longer need to explicitly model each edge and only need to calculate the, uh, the sender and receiver tokens for each particle and sum them according to the map, uh, according to the attention map to extract the edge semantics. So in other words, uh, when, the, when the attention width is only one or zero, which indicates uh, the connectivities of the graph, uh, the results computed by the figure B is uh, exactly the same as the results in the figure A which is the GNN-based methods. So all discussion here is based on the simplif uh, simplification about uh, omitting activation function and normalizations. So when in practice, such uh, structure itself is not enough to capture semantics uh, in particle interactions. So thus we modify the attention width in the next slides. Uh, here we only show the results of the formula and uh, we uh, talk about how to understand it. So please refer to our paper for detailed deductions. So as we can see here, uh, for each token VI, uh, we will generate a sender token and a receiver token. Sender token is here and a receiver token is here. So for the receiver and sender tokens, uh, we first, we first uh, decentralize, uh, decentralize it and then normalize by the standard deviation between the receiver and sender tokens. Then we let the current token V uh, to attend both the receiver token and sender token. And then according, uh, aggregate them accordingly. So we can understand, uh, we can understand such operations in this way. Uh, for a simple example in the figure A here. So when the two balls, uh, two blue balls, are gonna co collide with each other. So, and let's have a look at how we compute the changes on, the, uh, on ball two. So here, let's assume the length of the arrow uh, means the, veloci uh, the velocities of uh, the blue balls. So, and uh, first in the first in the, uh, in the first formulation, we move both the sender tokens here and receiver tokens to a standard, play, uh, to a standard space and where they are decentralized and uh, normalized, which means as shown in figure B, uh, we first uh, decentralize and normalize the length of the arrow here uh, for the ball one uh, to the unit length. Uh, so every, each arrow here are the unit length. Uh, then we let the two balls interact with each other. So which is shown by the summation of the two tokens in the second, second formulation here. And then, uh, and after that, we will rescale the effects from ball from ball one, and uh, in, uh, in the original space according to the attention width. So, as shown in the figure C, we rescale the length of the arrow when aggregating the effects from the neighbors, uh, which is uh, the operations in the uh, second uh, uh, formulation. So, experiments show that such kind of operation can get. Uh, can get richer semantics for, uh, from each pair of uh, interactions. So another contribution of, uh, is, is that we also apply uh, ab abstract particles to uh, extract the semantics for each material. So the abstract particles are trainable tokens uh, in practice. Uh, and uh, each, ab each abstract particles represent, uh, represent the dynamic pattern for each material. The abstract particle will interact with all the other particles belong to its corresponding materials. For example, here, uh, the blue particles and the orange particles are two different kinds of materials. Thus, we have two abstract particles here. Uh, so the light blue one represents the dynamic pattern for the blue materials and the 
uh, orange one uh, represent the dynamic patterns for the orange materials. So uh, this is uh, this is how the abstract particles uh, work. So next, I'll show some of the results of uh, of my uh, of the of, of my work. So here uh, from the uh, MSC, we can see that uh, our model achieved the best results in with uh, similar size of uh, model parameters. And uh, when it comes to the model forward time uh, during training, and uh, we can see that uh, the red line here is our model. So when the number of interactions increase to maybe uh, four to five, four, 40 to 50 thousand, uh, our model, uh, the, the forward time is uh, roughly we uh, roughly changed by our model, while the the other previous work, uh, their um, uh, their computation uh, their forward time increase, uh, as is shown in this figure. So uh, here uh, I show some uh, visualization of uh, of uh, the render rollout. So here is the base uh, one of the base in, uh, environment. It's called box class here. So this is a ground truth, and uh, the top two on the right are my uh, models. So we can see that uh, we can see uh, we can focus on the rotation and the position of the rigid box here. So yeah. So uh, our model still. Uh, uh, are very close to the ground truth here. And uh, we also did some generalizations. So for example, uh, I still use the uh, box class, for example. And in this domain, we add more particles to the fluid block. So, uh, uh, and uh, we just uh, you, uh, test all the models on the new domain. And we can see that uh, our model still can maintain the vivid uh, predictions. And uh, next is uh, we enlarge the rigid box here. Now we can see that uh, there are some still uh, uh, artifacts uh, in previous methods and the upper model still can uh, achieve better uh, results. And uh, here we change also change the shape of the rigid object uh, from the cube into the ball. And uh, for a more complex uh, shape, we change the cube into a bunny. So as is shown here. Okay, so much for my uh, uh, work. So here are uh, uh, several conclusions. So uh, in this uh, talk, we talk about the particle-based simulations and uh, the gene-based methods. And uh, I introduced uh, my new network, uh, my new uh, work about uh, how to hybrid the gene and the transformer and uh, take uh, advantages of uh, both the models uh, for the physics simulations. And uh, for, for some, uh, some future works and uh, some interesting tasks, uh, there are several works that, uh, so currently the, uh, the work still uh, take, take as input the particle states. And uh, some works focus on uh, uh, the input as the images. So, and uh, reasoning from the images and output a new image about the uh, uh, new states, a new position of the objects. And uh, some other works also uh, will combine the reasoning and rendering together. So because currently some works all, uh, separate the two parts. So we only use the network focus on reasoning and the rendering still, uh, we uh, return to some existing rendering tools. So some works also focus on the combine these two part together. So 
Uh, okay, so uh, so much for my presentation uh, now. Okay, and uh, thanks for listening. So, any question here? Uh, Idi, thank you so much. Uh, it was really a great presentation, and uh, it, it seems that you have worked very pretty hard, and uh, and finally you got a good results. So uh, maybe some of our friends out there uh, want to ask a question. Let's wait for a a few seconds and then okay. if they if they don't have any questions i have a couple of questions for you okay, so okay. let's wait for a couple of seconds uh audience uh, you can uh, ask a question directly unmute yourself first and then please ask a question uh hi mm, hi uh, uh, yeah that's presentation so uh i'm i'm very curious about uh the to do uh, did, did you encode the physical law into the real world? It seems um, to that you, you just uh, deepen the current state and coordinate and output the future state. So it seems to me that you are doing the transient simulation. Right? Uh, pardon, can you uh, speak clearly? Uh, I, I didn't hear it clearly. Sorry. Uh, yeah, your, your audio is a little bit uh, noisy. Well, Maybe, maybe two way. Uh, maybe one thing what we can do is can you type uh, uh, and then and then send that uh, in in the chat box there. Maybe you can type uh, a question in the chat box because uh, your your audio is a bit noisy. Uh, let's wait. Uh, maybe we get we we'll get his question in the in the in the chat box. Chirwe, are you writing a question there? Mm. Chirwe uh, might be writing a question. Um, we'll, we'll receive his questions very soon. Uh, but then, uh, Idi, uh, let mm -hmm. me quickly, quickly uh, put one question. Okay. Uh, uh, in, in page number 25, in the slide number 25, let's say. Okay. Uh, so the metric you have used is like M three SE. So so why why is it not like MSE? Why why is it like M three SE? Does it have any uh, something to do with the particular uh, application itself? Uh, yeah. So uh, that's a good question. Thank you. So for this one is uh, because uh, in this uh, for example in this. In this example here, so let's see. Uh, we can see if we only use MSE. So uh, because the fluid particles are much larger mm -hmm. than the uh, rigid one. So if we only use MSE, uh, and even if uh, it's uh, smaller, maybe it's only because uh, the fluid part is uh, simulation well. But while while the rigid box uh, cannot guarantee the rigid uh, part also simulate uh, good enough. So here we take oh. the, of the MSE of the two mm -hmm. different types of uh, materials. Mm -hmm. So get the final the M3 SE. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, so is there anyone, uh, any, any further questions from audience? If you have any questions, you can directly unmute yourself uh, and then you can ask uh, a question or you can write uh, your question in the chat box and maybe I can read that out. But uh, I'm not sure, like the friends might be somewhere else and then they, they, it's very hard to write something in the chat box. Uh, so I have another question, uh, Idi. Mm -hmm. So uh, 
I was thinking like uh, when when it comes to simulation, mm -hmm. because there are so many attributes you need to consider, right? Uh -huh. For example, for example, the simulation of uh, water, let's say, um, yeah, simulation of water. So one attribution or one one factor that matters maybe is a temperature. Mm -hmm. You see, all, all the all the density of the water itself. Imagine that if there is like, for example, a water with the lemonade, lemonade water, mm -hmm, let's yeah. say, then then the simulation mm -hmm. will be different, right? Yeah, 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 sure. So so for example, those factors like you know, a, a, a water with a high density or you know water in a different temperature uh how how actually this this gnn can handle those one i mean the solution that you have proposed can handle these kind of factors are they i mean is it possible oh uh, yeah yeah uh actually uh so let's see this uh picture more clearly mm -hmm. so this is yeah. a different kind of fluid right so current uh currently the solution is uh the we, uh, first we can know the attribute of each materials is mm -hmm. a kind of uh, uh, we uh, regard it as a vector. For example, the viscosity and the density and uh, blah blah blah. So it's a vector here. Then the current methods is that uh, we concat this vector with the particle states, which is the position and the velocities. Oh, so okay. it's a kind so we can regard it as a part of the particle states so mm -hmm. the network just taking this uh particle state, state. as mm -hmm. input and just mm -hmm. output the uh, uh expected uh, results oh okay. yeah this is still can control this control this one yes yeah. yes i think that's yeah that's true mm -hmm. yeah yeah, uh, on the other hand, for our work, uh, since we use uh, abstract particles, so uh, which uh, which is uh, we can control the attribute mm -hmm. here directly. Uh, it's uh, also the similar uh, effects, but how to say uh, uh, from uh, from the experiments, uh, we saw that the ab abstract particles we use uh, the explicitly to use this one to represent each materials. Mm -hmm. uh, this kind of method will work better because uh, uh, after all is uh, to some extent disentangle the uh, material attributes and the uh, inner the particle dynamics. So to some extent it, it, is, uh, it disentangle this semantics. So, uh, so our uh, the abstract particles will work better mm -hmm. on this uh, situation. Uh, so 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 then uh, for now the state of the art uh, is a graph neural network uh, for for such simulations if you if you think of you know from the uh, technical technology perspective if i say like graph neural network uh, is the state of the art for the simulation like this uh, will i be right or yeah for now it it is uh, most is uh, most people will uh, formulate this problem as a graph problem Okay. So, yeah, mo uh, most uh, works uh, uh, include not not alone the particle basis uh, simulations here, also mm -hmm. some other kind of simulations like uh, maybe like the garments and something else. Uh, to some extent, they also use the structure of the graph and they use uh, use the graph networks to uh, solve this kind of problem. Yeah, as, uh, either as a, a backbone or as a yeah. block of the. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Edi, thank you so much. Uh, let me uh, quickly go with uh, Chirway. Chirway, if you uh, have difficulty in, you know, uh, sending your question in the chat box, maybe you are you might be using phone or something like that. Uh, is it possible to try once again? Because last time when you asked, like uh, it was like very noisy. I could not even understand. Yeah. I think uh, same with uh, Edie also. I think he could not understand. Can you try once again? Uh, once again, possible? Chiwei? Chiwei. Chiwei, you are uh, muted. Oh. 
Okay, he may not be around there, I guess. So uh, if uh, nobody has a question, then I think uh, um, we can uh, close the session. Uh, Idi, uh, thank you so much. By the way, which uh, which year you are in? I mean, like second year, third year? Uh, I'm gonna be the second year student, a PhD student now. Uh, you are already in second year or you're going to be? Uh, going to, going to. Going to be, oh, okay, okay. So on behalf of uh, Graduate Students Club, uh, I would like to express my thanks. My, I mean, uh, thank you so much for the uh, presentation. It was uh, really helpful for us, I guess. And I, I personally, I really enjoyed a lot. I really enjoyed a lot. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So uh, in the future, if you have uh, more uh, publications, you know, you can, uh, if you like to share with us, please do let us know. And then we can organize a similar kind of lecture series uh, in the coming futures. And if you have any, you know, friends, you can, you can, uh, you know, tell yeah. them and then, and then they can also share their research work with us. It's, it's really a very, very nice, uh, you know, very important activity uh, that our graduate students club organized. So, okay. uh, by the way, uh, which lab are you staying right now? Uh, in S lab, uh, the yeah. S lab is uh, in. Is it in uh, CI Computation uh, Intelligence Lab CIL? Oh, uh, it's in SCSE uh, S lab School of Computer Computation oh. uh, Computing. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. What? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's, no, it's, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Edi. And have a good day. Okay, thank and you. And everyone, thank you so much for joining this uh, session. Uh, in the next session, please do join us. And um, you, if you have any, uh, you know, anything you want to share with us, you can write uh, write us. And uh, thank you so much, and have a good day. Okay, thank, thank you, everyone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.